Welcome to Section 2 of the Pragmatic Developers Scala Cookbook. In this section, we'll discuss a variety of basic Scala concepts to get you started with some of the core of how the Scala language works. We'll start by discussing the concept of everything being an expression. Then we'll talk a bit about strings and numbers and how to interact with them in Scala. And we'll talk about functions and match statements, which go hand in hand to help us do some uh, pretty nice, powerful interactions between different pieces of code. Then we'll talk about null allergies and the option type that Scala uses to avoid dealing with nulls and null pointer exceptions. Then we'll talk a little bit about collections, first by discussing the basics around Scala collections and how to interact with them, then discussing the basics of how to use for comprehensions to work with collections, and finally discussing a couple of generic collection operations that are useful in a very, very wide variety of situations. Let's start by talking about one of the most fundamental pieces of Scala philosophy. Everything is an expression. To explain this, we'll start by discussing the difference between expressions and statements. Then we'll talk about val, the keyword in Scala that lets us define a data holder. Then we'll discuss briefly the fact that all statements in Scala have a value. And finally, we'll go through some examples with if-else, print line, and talk about the unit type a little bit. Let's get started. In traditional programming languages, you have a very clear distinction between what's called an expression and a statement. A statement typically modifies the way that control works in the program. An if statement is the easiest example. When you type an if statement, if a, and you do something inside it, and then you toggle to else and do a different thing. This is typically considered a statement. It controls where your code executes and what parts of it execute, but it doesn't really produce a value. It either does a thing or does a different thing, but it doesn't produce a number or a string or some other object. Before we get into exactly how Scala deals with this discrepancy, let's talk about how we define a variable. In Scala, the most basic way to define a variable is using the val keyword. So if I write val a, that's declaring a variable named a. If I try to just run this, I'll get an error. All vals have to be initialized with a value immediately. So if I type a string, now we have a variable named a with a string in it. Unlike variables in many programming languages, a val declared with the keyword val cannot be assigned to more than once. We can only initialize it when we declare it. If I try to put something else in a, it will fail because we're trying to reassign to a val and vals cannot be reassigned to. Notice, again, if we look back at section one at how ammonite does things, that ammonite implicitly puts a val and a result name in front of all of our expressions that we type. So when we declared this val up here, we actually created two variables. Let's clear the screen and look at some more interesting use cases. For example, val a equals hello plus five. You notice that we can do anything on the right-hand side of the val declaration, even more complex operations like string concatenation or addition. A and B will now have these values for the duration of our program. This is what makes them immutable. Immutability sits at the core of Scala, and we'll talk about it a lot more when we talk about collections. For now, let's go back to this distinction between expressions and statements. 10 plus 5 is an expression. It's a bit of code that produces a value. Hello plus 5 is an expression. It's a bit of code that produces a value. In most programming languages, the variable declaration and assignment is a statement. It doesn't have a value. And if else block is a statement, it doesn't have a value. But in Scala, all of these do have values. So if I wanted to, I could actually run an if statement and put the result of the if statement into a val. Let's have a look at what that would look like. If b is greater than 20, then we want to put 5 into c. Otherwise, we want to put 6 into c. You notice that this compiles completely normally. 
c gets the value of 6 because b was 15, which is less than or equal to 20. We can use this in place of the hacks that certain other languages have in place to deal with the lack of complex expressions like this. So we can actually toggle between many possibilities here. I can say that val d has a few different possibilities. If b is greater than 20, then we're going to put the value of c in here. Otherwise, if a equals hello, then we're going to put the value of b in here. And finally, if neither of these is true, then we're going to put 7 in here. And we see that d gets the value of 7. This means that an if statement doesn't just call a function to go do something, change some state, and then never provide anything to the container that invoked the if statement. Instead, it's an if expression. Every single function call has a value that it returns, and every value that is returned can in turn be bubbled up by the if statement depending on which branch gets taken. This is a very powerful tool for dealing with immutable data types, and it lets us do these complex initializations that you see for our variables, and it also lets us deal with situations where you would typically not expect to deal with a value, so that in our mental model, we're always dealing with a value no matter what. Every single line of code in Scala, provided that it is a complete expression, it's not, uh, say, if b greater than 20 open curly brace, that's not a complete expression, you need that closing curly brace to complete it. Every line of code that is a complete expression will produce a value. And we're never asking ourselves, does this have a value? Does this have a value? How do I deal with putting this if statement's value into a result? A pattern that you'll see a lot in other languages is something like var e equals zero. And then you would reproduce this if statement up here, but instead of returning the value, you would assign it. So if b is greater than 20, you would put c into e. If a equals hello, you would put b into e. Otherwise, you would put 7 into e. This works, and if we look at e now, we'll see that we do have a result for it, and it is 7 just like it was for d. However, e can now be modified anywhere else. So if I wanted to now set e to 8, I could do that, and e would have a value of 8. The interesting thing here is that d was initialized to the right value, and now we know no one else can change it. This preserves immutability, which lets us reason more straightforwardly about our program's state. Let's look at one last example, which we also looked at briefly in section 1.1. Print line typically returns nothing. So if I print high, the value that comes out of that is typically not a value. In most cases, it's just nothing. In a language like C, we'd call that void. But in Scala, everything has a value. What this means is that we actually are getting something returned from this print line. The question is, what? Let's try and put it into a variable and find out. Now we put the result of printing high into this variable f. Let's run f. We see that ammonite doesn't print anything. We're going to do a little trick and run f.getClass to find out what class it is. You'll see that it's named void, but it's a class of unit. Unit is the fundamental type in Scala that means, essentially, no value. It's an empty value. So if I wanted to declare the type, I would declare it as unit, and this would work. If I had declared it as anything else, I would have gotten an error from the compiler, telling me that it found a unit, but that I said that it was supposed to be an int. Typically, you don't find yourself needing to create a value of type unit, but if you ever do, it's the empty parentheses that make this. The empty parentheses are a unit, and every unit is the same thing as these empty parentheses. So this will always be true. That's it for this section. We're keeping it pretty simple. 